Hello everyone, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Gospel of Mark chapter two, verses one to 12. So let's just get straight into the video. So in today's Bible story, we're gonna be taking a look at Mark chapter two, verses one to 12. Now, Jesus was about 30 years old when he started his public ministry. And at this point in the story, Jesus was so viral. He had so many followers. He was so popular that a lot of people wanted to hear him teach and wanted to hear him speak. And they also wanted to see him do some cool miracles. And word spread so quickly that Jesus was at a small home in a town called Capernaum. And because Jesus was so popular, everyone gathered around to see him. And there were so many people that not everyone could fit inside the house. And nearby, there was a man that wanted to see Jesus face to face. This man heard so many good things about Jesus. He heard how Jesus taught, he heard how Jesus spoke, and he heard how Jesus healed a lot of people. But there was one problem. One sec. One huge problem. All right, I'm sorry. You see, this man was paralyzed from the waist down. So he was unable to walk. He was physically unable to see Jesus because of his physical condition. He was pretty much glued to the ground his entire life, just like how I am on the ground. So the question is, how can someone who is paralyzed be able to see Jesus in the midst of all the crowds? It's pretty impossible, right? Well, this paralyzed man had four friends and these four friends were determined to bring him to Jesus for healing and here's what they did. So these four friends picked up the paralyzed man and they put him on a mat and then they decided to carry him to Jesus. But remember, the house where Jesus was inside was crowded because there were a lot of people, so they couldn't get in through the front door. So they had to revise and they had to come up with a new plan. And so they decided to go up, like on top of the house. So they climbed up to the top of the house and they made a hole in the roof and then there they lowered the paralyzed man from the roof all the way down to Jesus. Now if you were in that house, what would your reaction be if you saw that happening? Cool. Yeah, that would have been my reaction. And at the moment that the paralyzed man was lowered from the roof, Jesus saw the friend's faith, and this is what he said to the paralytic man, and he said this, Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. So the very first thing that Jesus did for this paralyzed man was forgiving his sins. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, who are you and, and how did you, where did you come from? Me? I I'm Taylor, I'm from Tennessee. Uh, okay, uh, never mind, never mind. Um, did you have a question? Yeah, so I've been listening to you for a while now and I definitely think this story is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, isn't this story pretty great? Yeah, but my question is, why did Jesus forgive the man's sins? I mean, didn't he go to Jesus for healing for his, you know, physical condition? Yeah, Jesus eventually healed him and the paralyzed man was able to walk outside of the house all by himself. Oh, wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, Jesus also forgave his sins because he wanted to show everyone that he was the son of God and that he has the power and the authority to forgive sins. So why is it so important that Jesus forgives our sin? Yeah, you see, sin is like a spiritual disease. It infects our hearts and our souls and our minds and our thoughts. You see, our hearts affect our habits and our actions. Oh. So I guess what you're saying is that our spiritual bodies is just as important as our physical bodies, right? Yeah, you're right. You see, Jesus is not only concerned about our physical well-being, he's also concerned about our spiritual condition. You see, if our sin is not forgiven, then we won't be let in. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Wait, what do you mean when you say we won't be let in? We won't be let into eternal life. Oh man. That's some terrible news. But 
there's definitely good news. Oh, good news? Okay, yeah, what is it? I want to hear. Yeah, you know, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, His most precious Son, so that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but they will have eternal life. They will be let in because their sins are forgiven. So how can I begin the journey towards spiritual healing? So what we learn from the story is that Jesus is a healer. He heals both physically and spiritually. So Jesus met this man's physical need to address his spiritual need. And like the paralytic, we all need to be saved from this spiritual sickness inside of us called sin. That's what really matters. Our greatest need today, right now, is the forgiveness of our sin. You see, there are gonna be times when we lie, when we cheat, when we steal, when we say unkind words to the people around us. And we do that because of sin. We all fall down, we all mess up. I'm a sinner, your pastors are sinners, and even your parents are sinners. And when we commit those sins, sometimes we feel like we're unlovable. Sometimes we feel like that God can't forgive us because the sins that we committed are so bad and so evil. Jesus has the power and the love to extend forgiveness to anyone who turn to Him and repent of their sins. So when we sin, don't run away from Him, but lean more into God's grace. Jesus can heal you. So if there's anything that you remember from today, here is our bottom line, and it is this. Jesus heals our spiritual sickness through the power of His forgiveness. Hey, thanks for watching this video and I hope you were blessed by it and I hope you learned a lot. And before you go, please support my channel by hitting that like button right down below. And with that said, again, thank you. You guys are amazing and I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. And with that said, Pastor Tim out. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, that was a crazy ride. Whoa, is that me? Yeah, I'm um, oh. you. Okay, that's, that's kind of weird. Oh, wait. Wait, is that me too? Yeah, I'm you. Oh, okay, so how do I get out of here? Wash your hands. Oh, gotcha. You forgot again. So you're telling me that I had to do this all the time? Pretty much. If not, you're stuck here. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, hey, remember, always wash your hands. Pastor Tim out.